your fan, Ladybug. I don't love you anymore, and I'm still going to leave with Mommy anyway. The narrative in Miraculous Ladybug isn't afraid to go the distance with their characters. However, to many fans of the series, one of the main cast pulled the short straw when it came to development and redemption. Chloe Bourgeois began as the personal antagonist for Marinette, as the classic mean girl who ruled Collège Francois Dupont, but in the second season, she seemed to have a change of heart. After finding the Bee Miraculous and having the chance to fight alongside her hero, Ladybug, Chloe appeared ready to turn over a new leaf. In the two-part finale of Season 2, Chloe officially joins the French superhero team as Queen Bee. She fights alongside Ladybug, Cat Noir, Rena Rouge, and Carapace in the first face-to-face -face battle with Hawk Moth. She helped protect her teammates, save Paris, and send their arch-nemesis away with his tail between his legs. Chloe struggled in her personal life, but it was clear that her role as Queen Bee positively influenced her behavior and how she interacted with others. That's why Chloe fans were devastated when she began to fall back into her old ways in Season 3, until the finale Miracle Queen, where she fully aligned herself with Hawk Moth and Myura. To many fans, the reverse of her character development didn't make sense, as her negative behavior worsened in the following seasons. However, there may be an explanation for why Chloe's character went downhill so fast. And so today we're delving into a theory inspired by Tumblr user Dragon Girl Phoenix Warrior. Chloe began slipping before Miracle Queen, but the episode appeared to be the final step to her ascent into villainy. Chloe's behavior was decidedly worse throughout seasons 4 and 5, and we think her exposure to multiple miraculouses could be the cause. Mom, I hope John Patrick has finished packing our suitcases. We're leaving right now! <gasps> the evidence for this theory begins with Master Fu in the episode Kwame Buster. In light of Marinette wearing multiple miraculouses at once, he warns her of the potential consequences. He said, merging miraculous would give you way too much power. It could make you lose your mind. Marinette reassures him, saying she's only wearing the miraculouses to release the Kwamis and not use their powers. She holds to her word and only uses the Mouse Miraculous to become the hero Multi-Mouse. The situation gets interesting when Marinette tries to leave and falls to her knees, even though she's merely wearing multiple Miraculouses and not using them. Marinette endures the fatigue and continues wearing these Miraculouses until Kwame Buster loses the fight. However, at the end of the episode, Master Fu tells Waze that no Miraculous wielder in history has been mentally and physically strong enough to use as many Miraculouses as Marinette. No Miraculous owner in all of history has ever been mentally and physically strong enough to use that many miraculous at the same time. Marinette appears to be an exception to the rule and the only exception in miraculous history. If that's the case, then the characters who have worn multiple miraculouses in the series must have felt some repercussions, including Chloe. In the season 3 finale Miracle Queen, Chloe formally aligns herself with Hawk Moth after Ladybug refuses to give her the Bee Miraculous. Chloe feels abandoned by her idol and because of that, she sides with someone who entrusts her with an immeasurable amount of power. To confront Ladybug and Cat Noir, Chloe opens the Miracle Box to wear multiple Miraculouses, despite Ladybug begging her not to. Like Marinette and Kwame Buster, Chloe doesn't activate these Miraculouses, but does wear them for an extended amount of time. We don't see Chloe faint or exhibit physical distress in those moments, so her consequences may have bordered on the emotional and mental side. Master Fu claims wearing multiple Miraculouses can make a wielder lose their minds. Granted, Chloe doesn't go crazy or descend into madness, but she does become more aggressive, angry, and dangerous. By the time Chloe reaches the end of Season 5, she would do anything to regain the power she had as Queen Bee, including getting the only adult who ever stood up for her, Miss Bustier, fired from her job, taking over Paris once her father resigned as mayor, and pushing away her only friend without a second thought. The episodes Confrontation, Collusion, and Revolution show Chloe at the height of her arc as an antagonist. Throughout three episodes, she gives up on her education, friends, family, and the city she calls home. That's a lot to lose in a short time. And although Chloe ends up sent away at the end of Revolution, she still calls Marinette to make sure her enemy is as miserable as she is. Chloe didn't have an easy upbringing, and her childhood can explain many of her behaviors. However, it's also possible that wielding multiple Miraculouses brought out the coldness in her heart that we see in the fourth and fifth seasons. We know that the Miraculouses can cause mental and physical strain, as Gabriel appears to experience many side effects throughout the fifth season. The most trying evidence is in the first episode, Evolution. In the episode, Gabriel plans to use his newly stolen Miraculouses to save Emily and Natalie from the Peacock Miraculous. To do so, he plans to travel in time with the Rabbit Miraculous to give himself and Emily the spell to fix a broken Miraculous. That way, neither woman would ever become ill. Fortunately, Bunnix notices the altering timeline and recruits Ladybug and Cat Noir for help, allowing them to chase their arch nemesis throughout history. During their battles, Gabriel feels intense pain due to using multiple Miraculouses and their powers. But he also loses sight of his goal from the beginning. I have nearly all of the Miraculous, including the one of evolution granting the power of time travel. Gabriel has the chance to save his wife and best friend in one fell swoop. 
Unfortunately, he chooses to confront Ladybug and Cat Noir at the last moment, therefore forfeiting his chance to rewrite history. Later on, Natalie calls out his behavior as obsessive, as he is more concerned with defeating the heroes than saving his family. Is it possible wearing multiple miraculouses corrupted Gabriel's mind and brought out his worst desires? Gabriel wants to bring back the woman he loves, which isn't necessarily an evil desire. However, attacking Paris, corrupting innocence, and trying to harm teenage superheroes are. If the miraculous has wounded his mind, it would make sense that it heightened his darker impulses. Even more convincing is that Gabriel becomes more desperate as the season continues. Willing to do anything to defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir, it could be that using so many miraculouses amplifies his hostile ambitions, something that he and Chloe share. Chloe could become more mean in the later seasons due to her overexposure to the miraculouses. In Miracle Queen, the Kwamis refuse to transform her because of her rude behavior, showcasing how her worst character traits are in full effect, which would be what feelings became amplified. It could be that Chloe can't help reacting in such a vindictive and angry way, even when she has moments of clarity like at the end of Revolution, when she considers calling Sabrina but realizes how her actions pushed away the only friend she had. Let me go! I haven't lost yet! I still have my robots! To finish this theory, we must address the exception to the rule, Marinette. How could she wear multiple miraculouses when no one else in history could? The answer is her personality. Marinette may make mistakes or questionable decisions, but always returns to the right path. At her core, Marinette is a good person who wants the best for those around her, and she would never use the miraculouses for nefarious purposes. After all, the miraculouses themselves aren't evil. The wielders determine the harm they can cause. Gabriel uses the butterfly miraculous to make villains. Chloe uses the Bee Miraculous to control others, and Joanne de Arc uses the Ladybug Miraculous to help fight in the Hundred Years' War. It seems likely that the Miraculouses, like all sources of extreme power, bring out the best and worst traits held by their wielders. It just so happens that Marinette is a force of good, which makes her a fantastic Ladybug. In the case of Chloe, she grew up in a separated family, with a negligent mother and a father who endorsed her spoiled behavior. She learned that being mean helped her stay on top and receive the attention she craved. These behaviors began in Chloe's childhood. Unfortunately, the Miraculouses may have made them worse. If the series ever allows Chloe to return, she may have learned from her past mistakes. However, like Gabriel, it may prove difficult for Chloe to abandon her negative thoughts, feelings, and desires. It's going to hurt people! You want to see Toot Toot Whistle ever again? Then get to work. Chloe didn't begin as a kind character, but the 360 turn the writers took with her character development never felt right with fans. They may have never intended for her to live up to Ladybug's image or to grow beyond her greed and desire for power. However, they still gave a glimpse of who Chloe could be if she let go of her hatred. And because of that, theories like this one continue to gain merit in the hearts of Miraculous fans everywhere. Perhaps in Season 6 we'll meet Chloe again, with the opportunity for her time in Paris to have changed her for good. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to stay updated on our uploads. I can have anything I want, even you. Unless you'd rather I told the truth to the Baker Girl.